the whole universe was in a hot, dense state the nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, what does it all mean? Why are we here? What's the point of all this? Are we ever really going to know? Or are we just destined for purposelessness and a vast empty void in the far distant future with nothing left? Well, we're going to find out. Stay tuned, coming right up on Drew's Book Reviews. Good day, good day, good day, and welcome to another episode of Drew's Book Reviews. Today, we are going to talk about purpose, meaning, what's it all for? Why are we here? Brian Greene's Until the End of Time is a fascinating look into the cosmos, the inevitable death and, death and ending of the universe, and our quest for meaning and purpose in our lives. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday with a main focus on science fiction and fantasy, and other bookish related content, and of course, some nonfiction reads as well. Brian Greene is a well known physicist, and it's basically what a celebrity scientist, I guess, is the best way to put it. But he's written several books. He's got The Fabric of the Co Cosmos, which was fantastic, The Hidden Reality, The Elegant Universe, Until the End of Time is his latest book. Now, I was actually lucky enough to get a signed copy of Until the End of Time by Brian Greene, which I'm so Happy that was available at, at our local bookstore when I went to pick up some new books and found this there. And of course, I had to grab it because Brian Greene is absolutely, undeniably, one of my absolute favorite science writers out there today. Brian Greene's books are just an absolutely fascinating and insightful look into our universe and how it works. And it really is a fantastic read. Now, his other books were really focused on the reality of physics and what physics tells us about the nature of reality. This one is very, very different. And while it definitely has that scientific focus, it does focus on the universe. It's from its beginning, from when we first discovered the idea of the Big Bang Theory. No, not that Big Bang Theory, this Big Bang Theory. To the ultimate ending and death ending our death or simply non-existence of the universe and it's about the philosophical impact of what science tells us about the universe around us now what's really fascinating with this is brian green himself opens up and kind of tells us the story a bit about his own undertakings his own existential crisis essentially of when he first realized that inevitably the universe is going to end and that it will be gone and no more and his own crisis on that said, hey, you know, if the universe is going to end, where's the purpose? What is the point of all of this? I mean, when all is said and done, and there's nothing left this but this immense blank void of nothingness, where we don't even exist ourselves, what is the purpose? What is the point of all this? And why is it even here? If it seems so inevitable that only nothingness will remain. Throughout time and throughout history, mankind has been on a desperate quest to find meaning and purpose in our existence and our lives. We are probably some of the most, we are the only species that we know of that spends our time contemplating the cosmos and why it's here. And Brian Greene, I think, does a fantastic job of illustrating where the science and the philosophy kind of come together and how even physics is kind of our search for purpose and meaning in an ever-evolving universe. And he discusses everything from the very ideas of consciousness, where does it come from? And the problem of consciousness being that you cannot empirically prove consciousness. How do you do that? How do you prove that you're conscious? How do I prove to you that I'm conscious? Because consciousness, by its very nature, is a very internal experience. And so it cannot be empirically proven beyond all doubt. And ev even as we continue to try, we all accept this. And so we all accept the consciousness is exists that we are conscious because we personally experience that ourselves. And so we just assume or presume that everybody else is too. But there's just no way to empirically prove that. And we all, it also, Brian Greene also talks about everything from religion, the evolution of religion and its central role 
and the role that it plays and how that's kind of connected to the ideas of storytelling and how we've for thousands upon thousands of years through artistic expression, whether that's paintings or music or storytelling, we have created a world in which we are constantly seeking motive, we're seeking purpose, we're see seeking a meaning to our existence, even though our existence itself is such an infinitesimally small aspect of reality and the overall life span of the universe. Section of the book titled Storytelling in Other Minds, Brian Greene kind of re recounts an experience or something that he did as a kid, essentially a story from his childhood when he used to watch Star Trek all the time, which is awesome because I'm a huge Trekkie myself, so I love the fact that this reference was included in the book. But it is referencing a Star Trek episode that is related to the telling of stories across cultures and across minds and kind of helps to illustrate the importance of storytelling in our culture. It says, when I was a kid, I often watched the original Star Trek series with my dad, a tradition I repeated with my own son. Morality tales and space opera have a strong pull on those who enjoy heroic exploration served up with a dose of philosophical pondering. One of the most riveting episodes, Darmok, from the Next Generation spinoff, depicts an extraordinary role for storytelling in the fashioning of civilization. The Temerians, an alien race of humanoids, communicate solely through allegory. So, And so, Captain Picard's direct use of language is as baffling to them as their constant reference to an overeer of unfamiliar stories is to him. Picard finally grasps their allegory-based worldview and establishes a cross-species meaning of the minds by recounting the epic of Gilgamesh. To the Temerians, the patterns of life and community are imprinted in a collection of shared stories. Our mental template is less single-minded, but even so, a narrative provides one of our primary conceptual schemas. And I love how we use that episode to kind of illustrate the idea of why we tell stories. It is to express desires, intentions, and ideas through a method that keeps our attention and can be memorable. And stories are just such a fascinating way to communicate ideas. And I think what he's going with this and what he finds with this is that through that storytelling, whether that's through religion and theology or the books we read or Star Trek or even Edgar Allan Poe's story such as The Premature Burial, which is also referenced in this book to elicit that feeling and to express our ultimate fear of death and nothingness in an effort to establish something that will last so that we could feel that there's purpose and meaning to our lives and to the universe as a whole. This is just a fascinating approach to this whole concept. And while the science may never be able to catch up to things like consciousness or purpose or meaning or anything at all like that in our lives, Brian Greene really comes at this and his conclusions are essentially, it's up to us to make purpose in our own lives. We provide meaning for ourselves. And it's ultimately our responsibility to do so. We, it falls on us. In a, in a universe with no purpose, in a universe with no meaning, in a universe that is ultimately destined for nothingness, in just a blank, empty void of nothingness, it is up to us to find meaning and purpose within our own lives. And I just want to share the concluding paragraph because I think this sums up the whole message behind this book so well. As we hurtle through a cold and barren cosmos, we must accept that there is no grand design. Particles are not endowed with purpose. There is no final answer hovering in the depths of space awaiting discovery. Instead, certain special collection of particles can think and feel and reflect. And within these subjective worlds, they can create purpose. And so, in our quest to fathom the human condition, the only direction to look is inward. That is, all noble, that is the noble direction to look. It is a direction that foregoes ready-made answers and turns to the highly personal journey of constructing our own meeting. It is a direction that leads to the very heart of creative expression and the source of our most resonant narratives. Science is a powerful, exquisite tool for grasping an eternal reality. But within that rubric, within that understanding, everything else is, is the human species contemplating itself, grasping what it needs to carry on, and telling a story that reverberates into the darkness, a story carved of sound and etched into silence, a story that, at its best, stirs the soul. Just a fantastic read. I love it. 
I love everything I've read by Brian Greene. If you have not read Brian Greene and you have an interest in science or even an interest in philosophy, this is a great book for you to pick up. It is fantastic and I loved it. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely a five-star review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join me on my Discord. Join me on my Bookstagram. That'll be linked below. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, until next time, keep on reading. Bye.